How do you survive when your blood is made of chocolate? Today's strange story is a case of a man on the verge of death who baffled his doctors as vial after vial of blood drawn from his veins all returned the same color, black as the darkest bar of chocolate money can buy. At the end of this video, we'll talk about what is going on, the dangerous over-the-counter medications that can cause this, and the weird things that occur to your urine when you get treatment. On the evening of March 23rd, 2022, a delirious 55-year-old man was brought into the emergency department of University Hospital Center Zagreb in Croatia. He was unkempt and clearly agitated, mumbling nonsense. The first odd thing about him was that he was completely soaked with urine and feces. The nurses knew this man was not well and immediately began to disrobe and clean him. In doing so, they noticed the second odd thing about him. His skin was gray and mottled and his lips were blue. Where did you find this man? And the nurses bark out with impatience. Looks like literal shit. The transport medics respond. We were called to the tram station by concerned bystanders. The man was delirious, slurring his words and running around the station, angrily yelling at people. The most strange thing about this entire case was the fact that even just one hour earlier, the man was completely fine. He has no medical conditions and does not take any pills. He is not a drug abuser nor an alcoholic, and though he has been homeless for the past five years, he's always been considerate and kept to himself. The tram station was just his usual resting spot. His makeshift bed was nestled in a tiny crevice off the beaten path. The last thing the man remembers is going over to the water fountain and taking a long swig. In the present moment, the hospital staff was losing control of the situation. There were two immediate problems. One was the man's oxygen level. Dangerously low at 85%, the man was hyperventilating at 30 breaths per minute. The medical term for this is hypoxia and tachypnea. The second problem was the man's agitated delirium. Despite the fact that he was dying, he was doing everything humanly possible to prevent the doctors and nurses from helping him. A mask called a non-rebreather, pumping 15 liters of oxygen every minute, is strapped to his face, but he pushes it off immediately and throws a swing punching one nurse in the jaw. As anyone who's been in the ER can attest, no hospital will tolerate physical assault. Rope-like restraints are immediately procured and the man's arms and legs are forcibly tied to the gurney. Next up are chemical restraints. Several milligrams of haloperidol, a strong antipsychotic sedative, is injected straight into his deltoid. An IV is quickly placed for a diazepam infusion. This is a benzodiazepine strong enough to stop seizures and is more than enough to quiet the fury that has mysteriously possessed this man. At this point, the staff still have no idea what is going on and assume this is a drug-induced delirium. To figure this out, the nurses begin the typical process of a blood draw. What's supposed to happen is simple. An IV is nothing but a plastic straw inserted deep into an accessible vein. Through it, red blood is supposed to be sucked out and sent to the laboratory. However, what came out of this man's arm was not blood, but black liquid chocolate. The nurses have never seen this before and worry they've punctured a vital organ. A second IV is placed by another nurse on the opposite side, but the same black oily substance comes out just the same. It is at this time the restraint wrapped around the man's right arm comes loose. The man sits up abruptly and accidentally cuts his forehead on the metal belt of the security officer trying to pin him back down. The cut on his forehead begins oozing the same black liquid. The staff look at each other in horror. This man's entire circulatory system is indeed flowing with chocolate? As absurd as this sounds, this man is suffering from a real disease. It is a rare condition, but common enough that all doctors are trained to recognize it by the unexpected chocolatey nature of someone's blood. Patients usually come with signs of oxygen deprivation that do not improve with the administration of oxygen, from blue cyanotic lips to organ failure. As the brain is the most oxygen-hungry organ, oxygen deprivation to the brain can look like headaches, lightheadedness, fatigue, irritability, or even sleepiness. Delay treatment even longer, and the patient will begin to seize, slip into a coma, and die. Think about how scary that is for the patient and the doctor. The patient clearly looks blue in the face, starved of oxygen, but despite pumping as much oxygen as humanly possible into their lungs, it does nothing to help them as they slowly suffocate to death. Because yes, that is basically what is happening. The patient is suffocating right before your eyes, and you can't do anything about it. That is, unless you have the magic antidote. It's called methylene blue. And yes, it is indeed blue. To understand what is going on, we have to talk about how the oxygen we breathe gets distributed to our tissues. For example, have you ever thought about how your body ensures your right big toe gets enough oxygen? Before medical school, I kind of assumed the oxygen we breathe gets dissolved into the bloodstream, like how a soda stream infuses water with carbonation. 
Fortunately, there's a good reason why oxygen is not delivered in this way. 1. To pump enough concentrated oxygen into the bloodstream, one would require an immense amount of force that our lungs simply cannot provide. Think about the force that a soda stream generates to carbonate a beverage. 2. That even if we did overcome this problem, we'd create large undissolved gas bubbles that would block off the flow of entire blood vessels. There's a name for this disease air embolism, and it sometimes happens when nurses or doctors accidentally introduce air bubbles into an IV, leading to strokes and heart attacks. 3. Though we do have oxygen dissolved in our bloodstreams from passive diffusion, aka the random leakage of oxygen into the blood from the lungs, it is so inefficient that if we relied on this, we would pretty much die immediately. So how do we transport oxygen? Hemoglobin, a special protein in red blood cells with iron at its core, the perfect carrier of oxygen. This iron usually has a plus two charge and is optimally made to pick up oxygen in the lungs and release it when entering the acidic, oxygen deprived environment of your organs, like your big toe, naturally delivering oxygen exactly where it is needed. In other words, you can think of hemoglobin as an iron oxygen tank. Each red blood cell is a delivery truck filled with these plus two charged iron oxygen tanks. Your body relies on this massive fleet to stay alive, and I say massive because it is indeed mind-boggling massive. Each delivery truck has 270 million oxygen tanks each. And how many delivery trucks are flowing in your circulatory system in any given second? Care to wager a guess? 30 trillion. That's 300 times the amount of stars in our entire galaxy. This is the massive delivery system our body relies on to stay alive. You can see why there's a problem with, let's say, the iron of this hemoglobin, aka the oxygen tank. This entire delivery network would be royally screwed. It just so happens that the man in our story has met hemoglobinemia, a disease that directly messes with the iron of these oxygen tanks. By oxidizing the iron of the hemoglobin and stealing an electron, converting the plus two charge of the iron to plus three, the iron at the center of this oxygen tank can no longer carry oxygen. This hemoglobin is now called a met hemoglobin and is functionally useless. And that is why you can pump the entire world's supply of oxygen into the man's lungs and will still not do anything to solve the crux of the issue, simply because the system meant to deliver it is broken. In other words, this is cellular suffocation at the molecular level, and it is fascinating. As more and more red blood cells start carrying these defunct met hemoglobin oxygen tanks, the red hue of blood we are used to begins to morph into the telltale sign of the disease, the black chocolatey liquid of death. So that obviously begs the question, what triggered the hemoglobin to transform into its useless cousin? How did the man in our story acquire this disease? In short, he was poisoned. The water fountain he drank from right before losing his mind was identified as the likely culprit. Could it have been laced with something by the KGB, North Korean spy? No one knows. One of the most common culprits are actually everyday common things. Have you heard of blue baby syndrome? These are babies diagnosed with methemoglobinemia due to being given infant formula mixed with well water contaminated with nitrates. Other culprits include fertilizers, food preservatives using sodium nitrite to the most common of them all. Topical anesthetics like benzocaine and lidocaine, sometimes used in dental procedures and often found in over-the-counter teething products for infants. In fact, this became so much of a problem that the FDA put out a warning in 2011 about this. Either way, treatment usually requires two antidotes, methylene blue and vitamin C. These medications are injected directly into the bloodstream and through a series of chemical reactions, converts iron back to the plus two state to be once again functional as an oxygen carrier. Fascinatingly, the blue pigments of the methylene blue byproducts combine with urochrome, the yellow pigment that makes urine yellow, to create the only possible way for someone to naturally pee out green urine. Add that to your green eggs and ham, Dr. Seuss. Luckily, the man in our story recovered fully, and five days after the incident, was discharged from the hospital. So, if you ever find yourself blue in the face, confused, randomly screaming at strangers in the local train station, you may want to see if your blood is made of chocolate, for this may be the only way doctors will know exactly what to do to save your life. If you like today's story, please consider subscribing. This entire channel is dedicated to fascinating medical cases and stories just like this one. Until next time, my friends, stay humble, stay healthy, stay fresh. Peace.